Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome. I hope y'all can hear me. I was I was having problems with my mic and my um, webcam earlier, and that's why I'm running a little bit late. I'm usually like right on the dot uh, nine o'clock uh, Friday mornings. But if you can hear me and see me, uh, shout shout out in the chat. Let me know. Um, anyways, welcome. My name is Ruel Gaviola. Today is Friday Fun Day, and that's where I just hang out and unbox some board games and chat with y'all. See how you're doing. Um, hopefully everything's going okay. You're staying stealthy, staying safe, staying healthy. I almost said staying stealthy, but maybe that's for a different type of game. Um, but anyways, I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Um, I'm here on Facebook and YouTube today. And one of the problems I had earlier this morning, I tried to go live right at nine and I went to Twitch instead. I had my old settings on on this, and um, it, it went to Twitch instead. So, anyways, here we are. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Gaviola is in the house. Thank you, Michelle. She ha says hello, husband. And Patrick, thank you for um, verifying audio and video are good. Um, I've got, I'm going to do things a little differently today. I think I've got a couple of games uh, to unbox, and we'll we'll chat. If you have any questions or comments, throw them in chat. I will get to them as possible. I want to welcome everyone on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, that's where I stream on Fridays, uh, every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. I uh, want to shout out to all our friends um, doing the Spiel uh, virtual convention, um, also BGGCon. Uh, yesterday, I had a really fun interview with Pat Marino of The Op. We talked about three games that we would never get rid of. And it was a great conversation. A lot of people in chat, too. There's so many uh, so many games that I was like, yeah, why I would never get rid of that game either. But we had to narrow it down to three actually with five, if you talk, count our honorable mentions. And that's always a tough process. It's a fun little exercise, right? Uh, see what we're going to talk about, uh, see which games we're going to keep. Today at 1 p.m. over on Twitch, um, also, it'll also be co-hosted by BGG. Um, I will be talking with the guys from the Board Game Barrage podcast. Well, two of them, uh, Neilan and uh, Mark. And we're going to talk about the top three values in board games. So that was inspired by <clears throat> a tweet that they had sent out earlier this week talking about um, they, they had this exercise of saying, hey, you have 100 US dollars, what's in your collection? And there's so many tweets and I was like, oh, that's such a great question. And so I put it together my list and then I said, hey, why don't we talk about the best values that we believe are in board game, like the most bang for your buck, right? So we're gonna talk about those at 1 p.m. Pacific. I hope you, you all can join us on Twitch over there. Um, Patrick, oh, nice. Uh, Michelle will be happy to see this. Patrick just ordered his Universal Yums. That is, you know, maybe we should start talking about sponsorship with them. Uh, that is a, a, a company that uh, sends you snacks once a month, a little box of snacks from different parts of the world. So Michelle, so far, I think she's had um, Brazil and Russia and uh, I had some of the Russian snacks the other night. They're really good. So it's like a mix of sweet and savory. So there's some like usually some kind of chips or whatever. And then also some chocolate or some candies. Really good stuff. Um, just it, it's cool to see, you know, different um, uh, snacks from around the world. And we, you know, we love, I don't know. Oh, here it is. Uh, we, we love our stream snacks here, folks. So if you are snacking right now, please let us know in the comments. Um, what, what's cool too, Patrick, and anyone that's um, getting into Universal Yums, not only is it just a box of snacks, like they actually include this little booklet and this is what you're paying for, I think, is like really neat little um, booklet of like fun facts about, you know, the country of origin and also about the snacks themselves and they give you a little description. It's really cool. Me and uh, Michelle and I, we, we just, you know, we like, um, we like eating the snacks, of course, but we also like, you know, reading about it and like, oh, learning about Russia or Brazil or whatever. And uh, like we said, we joked the other day, like, um, you, you can, you know, stop your monthly, you know, subscription at any time. I think it's, you just pick and choose, but I told her, Hey, if they don't, if they do the Philippines, you need to cancel that because we go to our local seafood city. We can get all the snacks there for much cheaper. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yep. Michelle is uh, snacking on coffee. Good call. Um, let me, so I'm, I need to change some of these banners here. Um, Friday Fun Day, we are talking about an unboxing games. Talking about an unboxing games. How's everyone's Friday going so far? Got any plans for the weekend? Um, Michelle and I actually went on date night last night, which is really cool. We saw went to the drive-in movies, saw movies, wonderful. Um, just nice to get out. Again, we're you know, we're being safe. We're not, you know, we went to a drive-in, so everyone's like socially distanced, you know, in their cars and stuff. So was, it's a great option to have. And I'm happy that our local drive-in, like they were actually planning on closing this year. 
at the start of the year they announced hey this is the you know after so many years we're finally we're shutting down the drive-in and then COVID hit and they extended their their stay so thankfully you know thankful for the, the city i don't know if the city stepped in or whatever but um thankfully they're still open we have that option <clears throat> Um, Melanie says, sounds good, but with food allergies in our house, not sure they'd work for us. Yeah, that I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know how Universal Yums works. I know there are other snacks. I know there's like a snack company called Snack Crate, which I think you can like sort of custom tailor to your dietary needs. So the Snack Crate's one, Universal Yums is one. I think there's a few of them. So yeah, definitely check it out uh, as if you have any um, uh, questions regarding dietary restrictions. And oh, okay. Uh, Patrick says fairly cheap. Got the snick six snacks a month to deal for fifteen bucks. That is cheap. Again, you're you know you're getting snacks that are curated by you know this company, and you get the nice little booklet of um, fun facts and stuff. So, um, so I'm let, let me let, let's share this. I'm gonna jump right into it here. Uh, Melanie says oldest twenty three is in Cali's has so many food allergies. Oh, that's a bummer. That's sad. Well. Um, let me see if I can get this application going here. So I've got, I've only got a couple of games to share today and because um, I'm thinking, I'm going to try to play a game with y'all. Um, I've got, so I've got Hocus Pocus. I've got another one to open. And then I've got the Fantastic Factories expansion, which is currently on Kickstarter. Um, it's a prototype, so it's not the final version, but I think I'm going to try to go through a couple of solo turns and maybe the whole solo game, depending on on time here. So anyways, uh, oh, Michelle says, I don't think Universal Yums accommodates for dietary restrictions. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know I'm pretty, I, again, check your, check the old internet, right? Um, Snack Crate, Universal Yums. I, I forget there's a third one I remember seeing, but uh, there's a few of these companies out there. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, find what you need. Uh, let's look at Hocus Pocus. This is from our friends at Ravensburger. Uh, this is based on the classic. Is it classic? Is that considered a classic uh, Disney movie um, with Bette Midler? And um, I, I'm going to be honest, folks. I've never seen Hocus Pocus. I, I believe Michelle and Lauren have, but I haven't. Um, let's see. So I'm going to open it up. And I know some people don't like what... Um, these type this type of uh packaging where they just put the uh plast um like little stickers i like it i'm okay with it you know shrink wrap there's you know i feel like it's just such a waste of plastic and why not just do these i mean they're 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 safe enough it's safe enough whoops i need to get a new blade this blade is totally dull um melanie says it's a fairly old movie yeah right I remember when it came out or when it was on video or whoops or as a DVD or whatever. But this is um I've heard I've seen some early reviews people are loving it so far especially fans of the movie. But um anyways this is Hocus Pocus the game. I I love, you know, packaging I mean it looks like a book, right? It's got the spine sort of like oh it looks like a tentacle coming out here. Oh, Melanie uh, came out in 1993, so this is for a whole new generation. Cool. Okay. So here it is. Um, I believe it's a cooperative game. Yeah, two to six players, about 30 minutes, and you will work together to play ingredients into the cauldron uh, to ruin the Sanderson sisters' potion. If all five ingredients are the same color or type, you stun a witch, and the sun gets closer to rising. If you stun a witch three times, the sun rises and... Wait. Oh, okay. If you stun a witch three times, the sun rises and the players win. The witches are defeated. But if the ingredient deck runs out before the sun rises, the player loses. Okay, yeah. Classic um, um, cooperative uh, mechanism here. Um, yeah, so the, obviously this is a little lighter, uh, lighter side game uh, gameplay, but yeah, I'm sure fans... Are, we're going to play this for sure. This is um, light cooperative game Looks like a little set collection. And okay, here's our Sarah, Winifred, and Mary. If anyone knows anything about those witches, drop them in the comments. And then here's your start track. Uh, you're looking to stun the witches. You start here, stun them three times. Um, there's different conditions for stunning the witches. Sarah's stunned if all ingredients are the same color. Winifred's stunned if all ingredients match and all five colors are visible. And Mary's stunned if all ingredients match. And... Oh, nice quality board here. Okay, there's there's the board in different colors, but again, 
make it colorblind friendly, different colors and different uh, symbols, right? To match the colors. So I love this one. looks like a thumb, someone's finger. It's got to be a thumb, right? And then you got the mouth and teardrop, a gecko or lizard, and then a little potion there. Uh, nothing on the back. Oh, very cool. Cat meeple. This is, I, I'm assuming this is the first player market. That was a great cat meeple. I know there's a bunch of cat fans in um, that wa regularly watch the channel. So there is your cat meeple, friends. Got the little eyes. I don't know if you can see there. Yeah, really nice cat meeple. Um, let's see. We got some of these tokens and stuff. Oh, okay. The different characters. Daylight saving, circle assault. Okay. Assuming those little trackers. Uh, and then we have the deck of cards here. We'll just quickly go through them. Thine own tongue. Dead man's... Oh, it's a toe. Dead man's toe. <laughs> Oil of boil. Dash of pox. Okay, yeah, so there are different colors here, and they have the different icons as well. So you're trying to match uh, colors and uh, icons depending on which witch. <laughs> depending on which witch you're trying to stun. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. Okay, this is Newt. It, it is a Newt. Newt saliva. That makes sense. Which is Newt's oil of boil, dash of pox, and so forth. So Patrick's in chat, folks. Uh, Patrick Demar, he will be live streaming on Monday. So be sure to follow him. Uh, Patrick, I, I know that you put a poll up as far as what game you're going to play. I'm not going to lie. I voted for Clank. So hopefully you and Meredith play Clank. I'm rooting for it anyways. But I know you have a couple other games there. Hopefully, uh, if you decide to let us know in chat. Uh, these are the different, um, what are these called? Witches cards or something. Let's see, which board, trick tokens, spell cards, and ingredients cards. So those are the ingredient cards, these are the spell cards. You got Mary Sanderson, all the different characters, right? Sarah Sanderson and Winifred. Oh, okay, so they're sisters, right? And then players cannot inf ask for information until another spell is cast. Remove the sun token from play and cast another spell. So yeah, it looks like a light um, cooperative game and we are going to be playing it. Um, Michelle, hopefully, well, I think it's three players or more. So Michelle, Lauren, and I uh, will be playing this sometime soon. How did I put the thing in here? Is that how it works? Maybe it's over here. Oh, uh, hi, Chris. And thanks for joining us. This is Hocus Pocus, the game, based on the... I believe it's a Disney movie um, based on the movie from back in the day. Well, how did they put this? Was it in here? I'll have to figure that out off camera, folks. So. Or did they do it like this? Okay, I'll figure that off camera. <laughs> Anyways, Hocus Pocus the game. Uh, Patrick says he'll be live streaming Clank, but he's rooting for Calico. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd like to see both of those games played. Uh, I've got another game here coming up. Oh, Chris says the movie was filmed in Whittier. Really? I did not know that. Fun fact. Nice. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Uh, this is an older game. Well, older by board gaming standards, right? It was 20... Oh, it doesn't say here. I know it wasn't that long ago, but yeah. Anyway, I believe it's pronounced Ray Colt. Holt. It is a an Uwe Rosenberg game. And um, thanks to our friends at Renegade Studios for sending this over. Uh, this one... I'm I'm really looking forward to. It. I love Uve games, and I'm still trying to find a copy of Glass Road. That thing's been out of print for a while, hasn't it? And um, I really want to get that back in, or back, or I want to get a copy for myself. It's been so long since I played it, but I remember really enjoying it. Anyways, uh, Ray Colt by Uve Rosenberg from Renegade Game Studios. You know. You're going to be, this, from what I understand, this is a lighter version of his game. It's not a, of his type of games where, you know, you're not going to totally, you know, starve your uh, your people. Like, I don't know if the, like, the eating mechanism or whatever, the feed your people mechanism mechanism isn't as, um, is as brutal as it is in his uh, other games. Chris says, uh, Glass Road is going to be reprinted. Nice. Oh, by Capstone. Oh, cool. 
Uh, Melanie Confer is so pretty. I played it once, and I will say that the replayability of Wrinkle is not. Oh, no. Okay, so there's. Oh, it does include a story mode. Innovative way to experience Reykjavik. Okay. Uh, in Iceland, you climb volcanoes, marvel at the Aurora Borealis, count sheep, and eat delicious tomatoes. <laughs> uh, thanks to geothermal energy, Iceland is a vegetable paradise. Players take on the roles of vegetable farmers to build a livelihood in beautiful Iceland, but with all the tourism around the natural wonders, competition to have the best vegetables is fierce. Uh, Patrick also says it's way lighter. Yeah, I'd heard it's a lighter game. Um, Looks pretty, yeah, right, Chris? Uh, Melanie says it has similarities to the At Gates of Loyang, and at the end of the day, Loyang is better. Gotcha. Okay. So would y'all who played it, would you say this is more of a gateway towards some of um, Uwe's heavier stuff? Would it be playable by, like, casual gamers? Or is it more, like, just light in comparison to, like, you know, gamers who like to game a lot? You know what I mean? Like, would this be approachable by someone who's never played a game before. Let me know in comments, because I don't know too much about this game. Um, Patrick says, no feed your people mechanism, but really the whole game is feeding people. Okay, so that's what it is then. Uh, so here, are nice wooden tokens. Looks like tomatoes. Little carrots. Cucumbers, I don't know. Looks like mushrooms. Oh, these are nice. All wooden tokens, different shapes. I'm, I'm down with that for sure. Really nice. Instead of just, you know, cubes. They could have easily been cubes. Okay. Oh, okay. So everyone's saying the gateway. Cool. Nice. You know, I love like um, as far as gateway Uve's patchwork is one of my all time favorites. Michelle and I love patchwork. So if this plays well at two, you know, I'd love to get Michelle to play another Uve. Um, I don't know if you, yeah, we haven't played any other Uve's, I think, except for patchwork. Um, yeah, these tokens are love these tokens. Beautiful. So production values there for sure. Um, there's those are those like little bottles or whatever. Oh, more tokens here. I don't know what this is. Maybe a cabbage or something. Um. Oh, okay. So, yep. Good old stickers. You're gonna stick them onto uh, these. I guess your player things here. Okay. All right. Melanie says it's heavier than Patrick for sure. Cool. Okay. As far as rules wise, do you think it's? I mean, I'm assuming it's more rules than patchwork. Um, Patrick says I'm a total sucker for polyominoes. Yeah, yeah, you know Michelle's a big fan of polyomino games too. Um, patchwork, and we just played. Uh, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago now. Wow, it's been that long. I was thinking about it, but My City from um, uh, Cosmos Games, Reiner Knizia's Legacy game. Oh, it was that was excellent and. We've only done three of the 24 scenarios, so we need, we still need to continue. We really enjoyed that. That's polyomino, but a, a legacy game. Um, Melanie says, played with daughter-in-law, who's not a Euro fan, and a gateway gear mostly, and she enjoyed this one. Okay, good. Thank you, Melanie. Good to know. Love to get this on the table um, soon. Um, Patrick says, worker placement. Cool. I'm always a, I'm a big worker placement fan. I am a sucker for worker placement. Let's look at some of these cards here. Round order. Looks like those are player aids or whatever. And, of course, the homes that you're building or the parts of the house you're building. These are bigger cards than I expected. I thought they were going to be... These are not as small as regular playing cards, but uh, they're bigger than regular playing cards, and they're bigger than... Or they're not as big as a tarot-sized card. So in, sort of in between. Nice, chunky cards. So different uh, things. So it looks like you have two different abilities and stuff. Cool, cool. Uh, stop. Attention. Please do not open. Only open once you are familiar with the game. Oh, so have y'all played the story mode for this? Is it any good? Uh, slightly bigger than poker size, uh, Chris. <clears throat> yeah, definitely bigger than poker size. Uh, odd, odd size, actually. And is this the rule? Yeah, rule book. And the poly oops, polyominoes at the bottom here. Are they the polyominoes? Or oh, big old player boards. Oh, this is a nice chunky cardboard, too. Okay, let's check a look at the main board, right? Double sided. All the actions and stuff, right? Cool, cool. Not polyominoes. I don't know why I said polyominoes. All the uh, cardboard chits here, and you're going to build your little tomato carrier or something. Yeah, boxes for the tokens. Thank you. Yeah, there they are. Cool. 
yeah, definitely looks. I mean, just looks alone. It looks like a lighter Uve Rosenberg game, which is great. That means it's going to get to the table in my house. I'm excited. And again, it's a it's a got some food in it. Uh, you know, we're big food fans here, so food games are a definite must play in our household. Yeah, really nice production value. Agreed, Chris. Uh, again, thanks to our friends at Renegade for sending this over. Uh, one more game today. <clears throat> Because I think we're going to play a couple of rounds. Whoops, there's some plastic that I just threw there. Fantastic Factories. Have you all played this? This is one of my favorite uh, light engine building games. This was, I believe, kickstarted a year or two ago. And then Deepwater Games picked it up. I want to shout out um, Nolan from Deepwater Games for sending this over. We played this. Uh, Michelle, Lauren, and I played this maybe two months ago on our live stream. And we loved it. It was So we've been fortunate during this pandemic to play, you know, a fair share of, uh, our fair share of games. And this one, and I know when Michelle and Lauren like a game, it's like when we'll play it off stream, right? So if they say, hey, can we play this again? I was like, okay, yeah. And I really like this. I think this is a fantastic light deck, um, I mean, engine building game. Um, let me check. Uh, I'm going to catch up on the comments real quick here. Melanie says, all in sell very cheap, like 30 bucks. I've seen it. Anyone's interested? Patrick, I never got in store mode. One play was enough for me. I traded it. It's good, but I have plenty of gateways. I'm a fan of heavier stuff. Yep. Patrick saying, playing in the commission. Like, no, I'm not buying this one. I bought it. I haven't played it yet. Still in shrink wrap. <laughs> yeah, got a bunch of those. But cool. I'm looking forward to playing um, that game. But anyways, Fantastic Factories. This is the base game. Um, if you've never played it before, it's light, a light engine building game. Um, sort of like, um, you know, if you've played Gizmos, um, I feel like it's a step up from like Splendor, like which is just pure engine building. Um, and that's probably still, oh man, is that my go to engine builder? I mean, yeah, that one might be my go to engine builder, Splendor, because, especially at two. I still play it with Michelle. And I actually, if you, if you saw me last night on Twitch, I just did this um, impromptu hangout last night because um, normally on Thursdays, I do uh, a role playing game called Rivers at um, of Rivers, <laughs> Wardlings of Rivers Hollow with Renegade, where we meet and we have this uh, ongoing campaign. Um, we would play every Thursday, and it's, I think we're on week eight or nine. Um, but, anyways, we were going to play last night, but we had to cancel due to one of the cast members um, being uh, falling ill. Uh, hopefully, they're, I mean, they're okay. We, we got an uh, email, but they, they weren't feeling well. So, um, anyways, we had to cancel and since we canceled, I had two hour, a two hour block of time free. So I decided, Hey, what the heck? I'm I just went on Twitch and hung out and, um, played Splendor on steam. Um, so if you don't know steam right now, they also have like their digital tabletop weekend happening and they have a bunch of board games on sale. I actually picked up, what was it? Isla sky for like a dollar 39. It's like some ridiculous prices. Normally like 10 bucks, like dollar 39. Yeah. They've also got some 99 cent games there. Um, some of the other games that they have on sale, I already have had, I think like, like Takenoko or Tokaido is on sale. And uh, anyways, yeah, a bunch of board game implementations there. So if you haven't been to steam the last lately, check it out. I think the sale goes on all weekend. Um, let's see. Man, Panda, no worries. Um, uh, yeah, you know, Amanda, I was gonna, I forgot to post like my little uh, reminder about this and I was running late. And anyways, we're here. Uh, Amanda Panda, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Patrick says, engine building Wingspan is my go-to. Yeah, Wingspan is also, I mean, this is a fantastic game. I, I love Wingspan, one of my favorites. Uh, Melanie, my go-to is Century Golem Edition, another beautiful game. Um, oh, okay, yeah, Chris, you should definitely open up Fantastic Factories. Uh, Splendor's go-to game. Splendor at two players is awesome. I love it at two. It's we can knock out a game in like fifteen minutes, you know. And you can actually the the app. I mean, the uh, the Steam version. I've played it, you know, several times, and I can knock out a game. I remember my quickest game might have been like five minutes because it's just so fast. So um, Patrick wants to try the. Um, Oh, cool. Amanda beat the Wingspan Easy Autumn in 30 minutes. Very nice, Amanda. Congrats. Yeah, it's not easy. Um, Patrick, I really want to try the Progression Century. The one with the island sounds cool. That one was actually like my least favorite. That was the, the pick up and deliver one. 
for whatever reason, just didn't um, stick with me. Um, I like the final one, the one it actually had like a worker placement mechanism to it. Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, I, I've played them all. I've enjoyed them all. And it, it's funny, I, for a while we liked Century better, but I think we, we came back to Splendor. It was just a little more streamlined. And um, I mean, they're all fantastic. They're, they're all great games. I, I felt like, oh, you know what? We did play, I think it was with Daryl and Marlin. I think we played with everything one time where it was like the, you can combine all the games. I know we've combined two of the three a couple of times, and it was fine. I, I just I felt like, yeah, that the first one was so streamlined. It was it was a you know nice streamlined experience. The second one, the pick and deliver, I felt a little. I don't know if it was clunky is the word. I mean, it's not a bad game. It just wasn't. I'd rather play other pick up and deliver games. Um, oh, okay, Patrick got root. Yeah, that was one of the ones uh, that was on sale. Uh, I already had that one, but yeah, it's it's on. It's like half price or something like that or 40 percent off um yeah chris says so talking about the century um again haven't gotten a third one yet but we'll probably play the monster version once yeah and it was cool um uh, i mean you'll see how when you play it it's you know you see the the progression of the of the games and how they inter intertwine together that, that is neat um yes, that's what i want to do but i don't know any of those that haven't gone around it oh okay cool Anyways, let's look at Fantastic Fairy. So what I wanted to show off, folks, was... So here's the base game. If you haven't played it, uh, you have... I mean, the components are great. you got the, you know, little uh, double-layered um, player boards. You know, it's slot in your dice here. Plays one to five. There is a solo mode, and the solo mode's fun. Um, the starting player token is a factory. Lots of dice. All the dice here. you got the... Lightning, and I forget the name of the things. Your ultimate goal is to produce these things, the goods. Once you get to 12 goods, the game is over. So it's a 30-minute um, game. You have... Here's the solo rules here. Pretty pretty simple solo setup as well. You know what? How much time do we got? 9.30? I'm going to go through a couple of... Let's set up and... Uh, let's set up a game, shall we? So this is Fantastic Factories. I'll put this over here. And we'll set up here. Thanks again for joining us. If you are just stopping in, my name is Ruel Gaviola, and this is Friday Fun Day. I usually just, you know, talk, um, hang out, unbox games, and talk. And, you know, I forgot to put up here is this thing, Rolling with Ruel. Uh, thanks to my friend, Holly Chu. She is, there's her website. Uh, Holly Chu does all the art and emotes for my Twitch channel and also here on Facebook, YouTube. She's great. There's Holly right there. Holly Chu Illustration. For all of your artwork needs, I believe, uh, yeah, we have uh, Patrick in the house. Patrick also had his uh, avatar created by Holly. Uh, she does fantastic work, folks. So please check out her website if you can. Stephanie is in the house. Hi, Steph. Uh, Stephanie, um, she, uh, we got to play a game together. I, I believe it was Monday or no, Wednesday night. Uh, we got to play Celestia together. Uh, it was great. So please follow uh, Stephanie. She does a really cool YouTube channel called Minimum Player Count where she reviews games, you know, opens up our, I mean, uh, you know what I saw the other day, Stephanie, uh, I really enjoyed was your Shelf of Shame uh, video where you went through all the games you haven't played yet. I mean, that's something we, we can all relate to here. Um, as gamers, right? So that was really fun. Uh, let's see. Um, what was I trying to do here? Oh, banners. Okay, so Friday Fun Day, talking about unboxing games. So thanks again to Holly Chu for the artwork. Oh, Patrick, not to derail this, but Pandemic Legacy Season Zero came out today. Oh, awesome. I do have, I've had a copy of that here. You know, I was. Yeah, I don't know if I should unbox it because I don't know. Well, I'm sure you could unbox it and sort of show it, you know, show like the basic um, components. But I was going to, we were going to try to play it um, sometime probably early, early mid November. Uh, just do the first scenario and just warn everyone, hey, this is spoiler, spoiler alert, blah, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, so yeah, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero, folks, is out. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about Fantastic Factory. This is the new expansion. Currently on Kickstarter, uh, check it out, uh, Deepwater Games, uh, in uh, conjunction with Metafactory Games. But Deepwater is the, the one to check out. 
Joseph uh, Chan and Justin Faulkner, the designers, just like the original game. This is a prototype. So, of course, these are not final. I mean, you can see the rule book here that I have. It's just paper. Um, what this adds are the corporations. And these are the, is that what it's called? I want to make sure I'm using the right. Corporate faction bo um, boards. Boards or card. Anyways, uh, these are asymmetric uh, player abilities. So if, I mean, one of my favorite engine builders, not a light game, but um, Terraforming Mars, right? Um, I won't play that game without Prelude now because Prelude skips like the first couple of turns that are just nothing. Um, and I Prelude has similar things where they give you the starting um, factions or corporations. And this is the same thing here. You're going to shuffle these up and um, each player gets two face down. They look at one and discard the other. Um, so here they are here. Again, these are prototypes, folks. These have just been printed on you know cardstock. Uh, this is the base game there. <clears throat> and then these are the new cards. Whoops, I just dropped a token. And actually, these tokens, uh, these these are actually mine. I just grabbed these from you know from the old jar of extra um, resources that I have. These tokens uh, they represent the new resource in the game. So normally you have where's the rule book? In the base game, you have energy and metal. Those are your resources. And then in the new one, manufacturers, they add vitamins. Okay, so they're not going to look like this, obviously. They'll probably be nice, like little chits, like the original. Uh, but you do get all of the new blueprints and contractor for hire cards. And again, prototype, they, the art isn't final, so they, have, they don't have the art, but they do have uh, the ability and then the cost. They just don't have the final art yet. So it adds a bunch of cool new... Um, contractors and then blueprints again these probably not final art but they do have the art on these uh you're building all the different types of factories and buildings in your city uh here's a glass studio medical school academy and so forth uh chris i did say vitamins yes the they are vitamins um so we have a quarry vending machine <laughs> i love the vending machine that's funny strange crystal okay quarry enigma engine city park vending machine, so forth. Okay. Let's try to, well, let's, let's set this up. Tell you what. Um, okay. Actually, I, I will move this out of the way. Uh, let's see how we set up the solo game. Solo game, it's been a while, folks. There's all the blueprints. Are these? Yeah, these are the new blueprint or the old blueprints. And oh, each round. So that's what you're gonna do each round. You do a mark market phase. Um, you may uh, you optionally may pay resources to discard and refill uh, marketplace place row. You're gonna gain a blueprint for free or hire a contractor, and then to hire you just discard the correct tool. I'll talk about that in a second. Then the work phase, you just roll your dice, and then in any order, you place your workers. Your dice are your workers. You activate cards, which you have, you know, you have the dice on, and then you uh, build. There's no limit, but you cannot um, do duplicates. I think there are a couple of cards that break that rule. You may do duplicates. Then the game end is when you have 12 goods. Okay. Um, let me fix this camera here. I, I got a big head, so it just it goes off camera sometimes. <laughs> Let's see, solo rules, set up the game um, as normal for one player, okay. So what we do is get these tokens here. Uh, I'll do it just like the book says. Blue, wrench, gear, and shovel, okay. And then we do the contractors. Uh, where is, so I'm gonna put the solo rules right there. Uh, we have, Legend, okay. Um, I hope, I don't know if these have been shuffled. We'll see. And since we're going to play the expansion, we're going to throw in some of these expansion cards as well. Um, I'm gonna, I'll mix up the first half here. 
What games are y'all playing these days? What's new? Um, are you anyone participating or hanging out at uh, Spiel Online or BGG Con Online? Let me know. Okay. Whoops. Whoa. Oh, the fan. <laughs> Where's my remote? Okay, my fan is not blowing directly on it. Academy, so that's a the expansions are. Um, we got the little icon down there. Gollum is from the base game, and then we have the trash compactor from the base game as well. Um, Chris says, "Watched uh, Ella stream cafe. Looks like an interesting card game." Oh, okay. Cool. I'm not a. Uh... Was Ella streaming on? Um, was that Twitch? I know Ella just started a Twitch channel as well. Was that on her YouTube or was that on Facebook? Uh, Contractors for hire. Um, so this is the base game. Let's get some of these um, expansion ones here. I'm just gonna shuffle them right in here. And again, this is easy to tell. Again, they have the symbol, the expansion symbol in the corner, so I can separate stuff later. I think it was Twitch. Okay, cool. Michelle Lewis, hello. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Michelle has been playing a lot of Point Salad and Tiny Towns. Yeah. And those, well, Tiny Towns is great if you want to play with your friends online. That, that game is perfect for online play. AEG actually plays every day at noon Pacific. And I was fortunate to play with their crew um, earlier this year. It was a lot of fun. And you get to, you know, they have like uh, the design, some of the design team from AEG, they usually play. Um, John Sinser, the uh, president there, and you know it's good to see him back on too. He he recently had a uh, cancer scare, I believe, but good to see John back in action. And um, Josh Wood, one of the designers of the game, he's usually there, and he always like Josh is amazing at the game. Him and Peter McPherson, um, two of the um, I think it was Peter's design, then Josh like developed it. Um, but <laughs> Josh like he scores like he always I, I feel like he always scores like double the points of everyone else. Um, Oh, Chris says, uh, Cafe has you overlap cards trying to make efficient layouts to make coffee. Yum. Cool. Patrick says, halfway through a game of New Dawn. Oh, okay, cool. Hopefully finish it tomorrow. Loving the expansion. Nice to hear, Patrick. I know my buddy Daryl. Actually, yeah, Daryl, um, was it this year? Oh, my gosh. Did New Dawn come out this year or last year? Anyways, I know I bought it for him for his birthday. and God, it, it seems like so long ago. It was probably last year, wasn't it? Um Here's a specialist there. Got to play the Fortune expansion. I haven't got her. Yeah, you know, Tiny Towns, the Fortune expansion, I like it. I don't love it. I don't think it adds that, uh, it like adds another, it adds a currency to it, right? The coins. And it's cool. It adds more of a, like a push your luck thing to it, which was, uh, which is definitely different for that game. I don't know. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it. I don't feel like it's a necessary expansion. But if you like Tiny Towns, definitely check it out because. The trying to manage that um, currency is, is it can be tricky because you are trying to push your luck. Basically, you can get a coin for building certain buildings, which give you a point, or it allows you to do other stuff, right? And then to uh, another way to get the coin, and this is a tough part, is you have to build two buildings in one turn. So I try to like I know when it, I've done it a couple times where you build like two cottages, then you get a coin, and then that'll trigger other things. So, um, anyways. Contractors for hire again. The ones without the art are part of the expansion. And let's see. Uh, so I'm going to shuffle these um, corporate faction boards, and I'll take two at random. Put the other two in the box. Oh, so these are our resources. These are going to be the vitamins. I'll just put the vitamin cubes there. Melanie likes tiny towns. Yeah, big fan of tiny towns here in this household. So, yeah, these are just uh, my cubes that I'm using for the vitamins, if I can get them out here. Put those there. i get all the dice and my player board. I'll tell you what, I'm going to move these all the way up here. Give you a little room here. Get my player board right here. Actually, let's do it this way. Yeah, you, you can tell I wasn't... Uh, 
I was running late this morning because otherwise this would have all been set up. But thanks for hanging out, folks. What's that? Player boards. I'll put the first player token up there, even though I'm only playing a solo game. So this is what I'm trying to get are the goods. Those are two-point goods each. Hey, Amanda, did we play this at Dice Tower West this year? Was that, um, I know, like, I played this with Suzanne, uh, Crystal. I, I don't know if it was you or someone else, but I, I really enjoyed it. It was the first time I played it, and I knew it was, like, instant buy for me. Um, it was just so good. Uh, let's get these resources out. These are the energy resources. And the dice. Put those over here. Oh, metal tokens, the metal resources here. Okay. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's off the screen. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, we did play it together. Yes, that's what I thought. It was such a fun game. Um, I do have to get these in different colors here. Uh, red, red. Again, the only problem, I mean, I do have problems with the colors here. The blues, purples, red, and green. And you have the, the white dice. You have more of those. Okay. So I'm going to, that's mine here. That's the vitamins. And then the solar rules. And then I'll put all these here. Okay. Uh, so I get, I'll take the yellow set of dice. And then as far as the, the machine is, that's what it's called. The machine is, um, we're going to play the, we'll place the starting, um, let's see. The machine gets two. They cannot be a monument. So the machine starts with two of these here. We're going to put the machine here. Um, they don't build like you. They don't actually get your headquarters and stuff. They just uh, they just have a, a tableau of buildings, uh, basically. Um, they get one of each die. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Or that that's what they're gonna roll. I'll be rolling mine here. Okay. So they are gonna. Let me put the white ones on the side here. And then these we don't need anymore. Just need one of each. These are mine. Um, here's my starting. Um, Patrick says, been playing Mario Kart Home Circuit. Oh, so freaking cool. I feel like a kid getting so excited to play with a toy. Nice. Um, I'm going to either choose Human Tech, <laughs> Human Tech, or Standard Tools. So Human Tech, you roll one additional die each work phase, but must discard one unplaced die at the end of the work phase unless you pay two energy. Star and resources, you get that stuff. Okay, cool, cool. And then start at standard tools. When building the blueprint card you discard does not need to match the tool symbol of the card you are holding building. Oh, interesting. You know, I'm always a fan of extra stuff, so I'll, I'll, let's go with human tech, and I will discard the other one. Um, let's see. I'll just put it right under my player board here. So I will roll one additional each work phase, but I have to discard one of them. So it's, it's nice. It gives you an extra choice, right? Um, and you can keep it for two energy. Okay. Let me see what the starting stuff is. So I get one metal and two energy. One metal, two energy, and three cards, uh, three blueprints. One, two, three. Uh, for the solo game, the solo or the machine gets uh, two randomly and they cannot be monuments. These are both productions, so that's okay. And they go there. Uh, here's the buildings I have that I'm going to be trying to build. So, oh, these are all from the expansion. Um, okay. That's, you know, roll an extra die. Pick up these and roll again. And monument, training cards. Well, do I have any training cards? I don't have any training cards yet. Uh, the monument will give me a discount, one less to activate. Um, okay, so that's what we have here. Um, oh, I was supposed to put the uh, contractors up here. My bad. Let's do this correctly, folks. Okay. Put all the 
dice. Got my starting resources. Got my starting thing here. Okay. All right. So market phase. Um, I may pl uh, pay a metal to discard and refill one of these rows, but I'm not going to at this point. Then I gain either a blueprint for free or I hire a contractor. To hire a contractor, you discard cards that have the matching symbol. So if I wanted to hire the specialist, I would um, discard a gear, which I have here. I would discard the city park in this instance. And then I would take the specialist action. I don't actually take the specialist in my hand. I just perform the action and discard the contractor. So this is gain an extra die of any value anytime during the uh, next work phase. Okay. So the next, I would just get a die of my choice. Okay. Uh, Tycoon, let's look at some of these new ones here. Uh, take all four blueprint cards in the market. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so the Tycoon, I would need to discard a shovel and then I pay an additional two energy, which I have. Unfortunately, I don't have a shovel. So I, the Tycoon is not in play right now. Generalist, gain one metal, two energy, and one card. Pick an opponent. They may gain one metal, two energy, or one card. Okay. Discard a building in your compound. Gain one good and resources equal to double the bill cost. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, yeah. These, I mean, the new ones, definitely different than the the um, base game here. So, yeah, it's, it's almost 10 o'clock, folks. Um, I normally do this for an hour, but I'll, I'll go a little longer. I do want to give myself some time to get ready for uh, my one o'clock uh, interview with Board Game Parage, and I also want to eat um, food. So I'm going to go through I'll go through a couple of turns here just to get give you a feel of the game. But thank you again for hanging out. Uh, much appreciated. Hope your Friday is a Friday fun day as we, uh, we are having uh, one here. Appreciate everyone hanging out. And I'm going to uh, play a couple of turns of a solo game of Fantastic Factories with the Manufactions expansion. And I believe there are actually two expansions. Is that right? Um, if y'all go to the Kickstarter, maybe I should go to the Kickstarter. Let me go to the Kickstarter page here. So, <clears throat> uh, Fantastic Factories Kickstarter. So on the Fantastic Factories, they are, whoops, wrong one. Manufacturers. There it is. I went to the original one. They have four days to go. Oh wow. Okay. Hey, can I share this page? Let's let's get fancy here. Let, let me sh share the page with you. Um, I'm gonna stop this one. Hi, big face. <laughs> go to Chrome tab and let's take a look, shall we, at the Kickstarter page here. So here is the Kickstarter page, folks. You can look it up. Kickstarter, um, Fantastic Factories Manufactions. They have four days ago, 4,000 backers. They had a $10,000 goal. They have, I mean, they have killed, crushed it. 265,000, um, I'm gonna put a remind me. And uh, yeah, here's, so there are two ex expansions. I've got manufactures here. There's another one called Subterfuge, okay. Uh, here are all the cards. There's, okay, yeah, so it looks like the vitamins are gonna be, you know, little tokens there. Um, let me see. So let's see. $25 for manufactures, $40 for both expansions. Okay. And you got promo cards, faction promo pack. Um, $49. What's this? Everything new. For those that already own Fantastic Factory, you get all the new stuff for $49. Okay. What is that? What's the difference there? You get. You'll get both new expansions and the promos. Okay, uh, pledge seventy nine for everything. So that's fantastic. It does include the base game. Oh, you got a play mat too. Oh man, what? So okay, so the expansions for forty. Those are just the expansions. You add another nine bucks for a play mat. Oh yeah, love play mats. Um, and then 79 for if you don't have the base game, that's a great way to get the base game. I, I love Fantastic Factories. Uh, then you have the retailer pledge, and I think that's it. Anyways, here's uh, there's Rodney. Hey, Rodney. Um, yeah, his how to play videos. I mean, uh, that, that's the industry standard, in my opinion. Um, and as we talked about, as I showed you here, variable player powers for manufacturers. You have a new resource, vitamins, and new strategic themes, and 70 new cards. And then Subterfuge inc increases or it has direct player interaction. 
um, and the new sabotage mechanic, powerful blueprints and contractors. And I don't think that was in this box because it was, yeah, I think these are all, you know, I don't know. I mean, it is in the manufacturing box, so I'm assuming that's the only one that I that I got. So, hey, Bebo. Um, yeah, there's, check it out there, folks, if you want more information. So, okay, yeah. So I do have, okay, 45 new blueprint cards, 12 faction boards. Oh, here's what the resource vitamins are going to look like, folks. Yeah, cool. And then new contractors. Oh, they have some of the art here. Okay. And if you follow um, Joseph Chen on Twitch, like you can actually see him working on the art. He'll like go live sometimes and just like in, I don't know what Photoshop or I don't know what programming it is. Um, I'm not a graphic design guy, but you can see him. He'll just chat and like he'll, he's actually working on the art. And I saw him doing one of the buildings here. I forgot, I might have, I don't, I don't remember which building it was, but he was actually putting it, you know, had the, the layout and stuff and all the um, icons and he was just doing the art. So check out Joseph on Twitch. Oh, thank you, Amanda, for putting down the um, um, Kickstarter page. Appreciate it. Yeah, um, Rodney's videos are the best. Yeah. A board Game Barrage interview is going to be on my Twitch channel, Chris, and it's also going to be hosted by BGG's uh, Twitch channel. That's at 1 p.m. Pacific. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure you know the board Game Barrage, Barrage guys. They're great. So I've got, um, unfortunately, Kellen can't join us because of work. So it's going to be Mark. I mean, it's great. It's going to be Mark and uh, Neelan. So we're going to just talk about our top three board game values in board gaming. So, I, I mean, you'll see. It's I, I've already seen part of their list. And it's going to be fun. I've got my list of games that I believe are the best um, values in board games, like as far as getting the most bang for your buck, right, for um, uh, board games. Um, so just continuing here. Hey, Christian Kang, our buddy. Take your chits. Talking about uh, the original um, Fantastic Factories, I believe. Oh, he talks about manufacturing. It's cool. I miss Christian's videos. I, I I know he's doing other things these days, but his his board game videos were some of my all time favorites. He he was just and he's a super nice guy too. I got to uh, when Michelle and I went on our road trip a couple of years ago up to up north. We got to hang out with Christian for a couple of hours and play games. And uh, I went shopping with him too at uh, <laughs> Mock Sporting House. Um, Emma Larkins was actually working at the time. Um, and she's like, oh, guys, there's a sale. Like, a sale? What? So Chris and I, we just went. And it was like, oh, man, twist my arm. Yeah, I'll buy this. And I think I bought that game Dimension. It was crazy. It was like, it's that 3D uh, game from Cosmos. And it was totally, like, discounted. Like, I might have been, like, paid, like, 10 bucks for a new copy or something like that. It was ridiculous pricing. But um, I bought that. Christian might have bought, like, Adrenaline or something. Is that it? I forget. It's been a couple of years. I'll, we had a good time. He, he's such a nice guy. Um, Christian was that told me the game about the shucks. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I watched him once. It was interesting to see how he thinks about the icon. Uh, Christian was the one that told me about this game. Yeah, yeah. Christian and uh, actually Christian and Joseph Chen. Well, we all got to hang out uh, when we we're um, up in uh, Washington. Just really, just truly nice people, you know. Um, anyways, that is. The Kickstarter page, uh, check it out, folks. Um, let's get back to the game. I'm going to, ah, big face. Let me uh, get my camera back on here. There it is. What did everyone have for breakfast? I, I actually treated myself uh, to a donut this morning. Um, okay. So I'm going to, I wanted to hire the specialist. You know, I'm going to hire the specialist. So it's a gear. I discard the gear card and oops gear. So I will add uh, an extra die during the work phase. So I'll put this here for now. Uh, these get filled filled immediately. There's a, another specialist. And then, so that is the market phase. So now I can um, gain a blueprint for free or hire oh, or hire. So I've hired this one. Uh, now I roll my dice. So let me get these here. Got a three, five, five and six whoops that was a five so how this works is uh you're going to place your dice here and uh the dice go in certain sections so in the mine you put a four five or six four five or six and you will get metal okay in the generate energy um section um you're going to get one you place a one two or three and that's how many energy you get so if i place a three um 
I get the energy, right? Is that how it works? Match bonus. And then if you match, if you put like two of these here, so I would get two metal, and then because it's matching, I get an additional one. Okay, so it'd be three. And also, if you match all three, you get two extra. Uh, let me make sure. It's been a while since I played this. Y'all, do y'all like when you play a game you haven't played in a while? Do you always refer back to the rule book, or do you just remember stuff? I, my memory is not that great. I always have to refer back to the to the um, rule book. Uh, Amanda, sorry, I have to go. We have joining it. No problem. Yeah. Um, Amanda is Amanda. You want to let people know where you're going to be at um, this weekend for um, Spiel and uh, all the stuff you're doing. Uh, drop a drop a link, please. Amanda is Amanda is demoing games, folks. If you ever, um, yes, Patrick. Uh, that's why I love icons and cheat sheets. Yes, I feel like every single game out there, uh, publishers need to put more effort into making player aids, right? I'm a huge player aid guy. Um, let's see. So basic actions, research, generate, um, matching bonus, activating cards. Yep, one blueprint uh, for the energy. So they would get eight energy because two from the matching bonus. So it'd be one, two, three. Two, four, six, plus eight. Yeah, so the number is eight put here. So if I put this here, I would get three energy. Um, well, what am I trying to build? Let's try to build this uh, fettuccine factory. Just because I have no idea of strategically how this, if this would be, if this is anything uh, worth building now, but I love a good fettuccine, right? I'm a food fan. Uh, this costs me two metal and two energy to build. I have two energy and one metal. So let's get some metals, shall we? go here here so this matches so i get one for each die so two metal and then because it matches i get an additional one i've gained three energy here one two three because of the number nothing matches so i don't uh the research space that's where you get more cards or move more blueprints okay uh so just for every die that you put up there you're gonna get um it's just one per die right uh, and the bonuses still count. If you match them, you'll get additional cards. So do I want to get more cards or do I want to get um, more metal? Let's see. Basic actions. Uh, recently draw one blue. Card. Okay. It has to be drawn. You must draw from the top of the deck. You may draw. Okay. So tell what. I'll just go there to draw one of these. I've got the concrete plant. Okay. All right, so um, I've placed my workers. I can activate cards. So I don't have anything to activate yet. So I can build. Uh, there's no limit to building, uh, but you cannot have duplicates unless it specifically says. I think there are certain monuments that you can have multiples of, but those monuments are usually just um, point scoring at the end. <laughs> oh, thanks, Amanda. Yeah, uh, Chris, yes. Um, Player A's cheat sheet on the back of the rule book. Agreed. Uh, Amanda, tonight she's going to be on Game Enthuse Twitch at 4 p.m. to play Wingspan with Aaron, John, and the designer, Elizabeth Hargrave. She'll also be demoing Macaron via Taiwan Board Game Discord and demo demoing for Renegade on Saturday and Sunday. Amanda, you're busier than I am. Look at you. Go, go, go. And Michelle says that, uh, Amanda Pan, I just wait for you to learn it so you can teach it to me. Yeah, Amanda's a great uh, game teacher, folks. Um, always have to uh, teach it means I can play with you. Yeah. Been a while since we played uh, a real life game with Amanda Panda. So, okay, so that's my um, turn so far. Now I can build. You know, again, I built the fed I want to build the Fettuccine factory. So I'm spending two metal and two energy. Okay. Um, oh, the specials. I forgot. I, I get a die of uh, any um, my choice. So the die that I get from my specialist, let's go with a five. So in, um, I get another medal, and then I actually get another medal for the bonus because the bonus is two rather than one. Okay, thank you, specialist. I leave that one there. This is going to go off my board because that's just there. Um, I've spent the two. Did I spend the two energy? I See, I already forgot, folks. Did I spend the two energy and the two medals to build this? I believe I did. Uh, so production. When I place two dice that match here, next phase, I'm going to get a good and a vitamin Plus, I get to roll an extra die. That's cool. Okay. So, Fettuccine uh, Factory is in the house, folks. 
Now let's go to the um, machine's uh, turn. What the machine does is we're going to roll one die of each color. So I'm going to take one of my yellows. Okay. So here's how they work. Um, they, let me make sure I do this right. Again, been a while. Um, so blue, green, yellow, and red. Right? Okay. Check the green die to determine the mar machine's marketplace action. Okay. So the green die is six. Um, reveal the top card of the blueprint deck, put it in their compound. Boo. Okay. So this goes in our compound. It is a monument. So they can't start with monuments, but during the game, you they can build monuments. And they, they just build it like that. Um, and then the red die corresponds to the red training type cards. Okay. Oh, okay. That's if they've... Okay. So what they've built uh, for each die of floors. All right. So these uh, some of these dice, they're not going to be able to use at first, but what they correspond to is each color here. Okay. So the yellow, they have no yellow buildings yet. The red, they have no red buildings yet. The purple, uh, red and yellow dice do not match very good because they're higher than the number. Okay, got it. Okay. So what you're trying to do is get um, equal to or lower than in order for them to manufacture stuff. So they're blue. They have two blue cards. The one is equal to or less than. And what that means is they are going to manufacture a good. Boo earns. So they are in the lead with one good, folks. Again, it's a race to 12. And also there is a limit uh, as far as um, um, cards and... Um, what is this? Cards and uh, resources you can have. So I can have a total of 12 of these resources and a total of 10 cards in my hand. I'm well under that. That is the machine's turn. They're done. Um, super simple solo uh, implementation. I, I love it. So then I take these dice off. Get this back. So I'm going to leave these here for the machine. Then I will add my yellow as we go. All right. So now we look at here. There's another specialist. Um, I don't have a card there to build. Let's see. Uh, discard must be a training card. Okay. Academy think tank. Okay. Fettuccine factory would be nice. Okay. I can spend, I'm going to, uh, I've got some extra metal. I'm going to spend the metal here to discard these. So you get to do this once and then refill it. So a Nexus, that's another new one. Biolab, I remember that from the base game. Fettuccine, hey, another Fettuccine factory and another think tank. Okay, so let's try to, let me see if I take, I can take one or the other for free. I have did my optional um, action to discard. Now I gain a blueprint or hire a contractor for free. Hmm. I always like the Biolab because that one, if you put a one, you place a one here, you uh, spend an energy, you get a, a good. Again, you're trying to get to 12 goods, folks. So I'm going to take this one for free into my hand. And then um, I roll my dice. Four, five, two, and two. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so I'm going to go to the Fettuccine Factory. Okay, I have two matching dice. I get a good, so that's one point. And I also get a vitamin. And then roll an extra die. That's cool. So I'm going to roll this extra die. Another four. Okay. Um, what can I build? Okay, so this biolabs. Um, can you all see that? Okay, the biolabs is going to cost me one metal and three energy, which I have. Okay. So, and then I can get more here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Huh. Concrete plant. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so I like the fettuccine factory. That got me a point and or a vitamin. Then the vitamin is like another resource that'll help you with other um, cards here. So let's do, 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 do. I'm going to go, oh, okay, so the, <clears throat> this stuff here, I can only put a one, two, or three. This I can do four, five, or six. So I'm going to be heavy on metal. <laughs> I'm going to be heavy metal. Get it? Um, 
let me build my bio lab first, just because I want to sit here and take up too much time here. So I've got one point. Oh my gosh, I forgot about the see, folks. I, I forgot already. Uh, with my human tech, I was supposed to uh, roll an additional die each work phase, and I discard one. So here's my additional die. Okay, so I already used these two. I now I am going to discard. So I'm going at the at this time, or I could spend two energy to keep that. Oh man, oh man, this is good. Okay. Oh, this is what I would do though. I would just yeah, it would just give me the energy. Interesting. Okay, so I don't have a one. And there are other uh, there are other ways to mitigate the dice as well, depending on the cards that show up. And this is actually a really quick game, folks. I mean, it, it wraps up pretty quickly. Um, probably like a thirty to forty five minute game. I think that's what it says on the box too. But yeah, I, I really enjoy this. Um, yeah, Chris, totally. Uh, there's a lot going on, especially with the new asymmetric powers. Yeah, this is this is part of the expansion. As Chris noticed, like yeah, you get your starting resources, and you are going to get this additional power, which I forgot to use the first turn already. So. Uh, I'm going to build the bio lab. Um, one metal, three energy. Uh, Chris says, do you influence the other players a lot when playing with other people? I think it's more indirect. It's definitely got that sort of like, <laughs> I remember when Michelle, Lauren, and I played, it's got sort of like a hate draft thing where, you know, you sort of, you look at the buildings and, you know, it's open information. Everyone's got their tableau and you could take like a building that, you know, they, they, probably want um but yeah it's more indirect the like we just saw on the uh, kickstarter page the subterfuge um expansion adds more direct player interaction um so oh boy okay so i've got two metal left um i'm gonna take this two the extra one and um take two energy Uh, so then I'm going to have to discard one. So I'm going to discard the five, and then I'm going to keep the fours. So I get one per one metal per um, die here. And then I get an additional one for matching. So that's three metal. One, two, three. And this is going to allow me to build the concrete plant. So I'm spending two of those, two of those. And then later on, when I want to trigger this, if I have matching dice here, uh, matching dice and the number of metal equals uh, two goods. And what's great is the the base game rule book. It has all the cards, you know, in the like an appendix of all the cards, so it's easily explained. Uh, so I think I know what this is, but I want to make sure. So place two matching dice and pay metal equal to the value of the dice to gain two goods, regardless of how many metal you paid. So, for instance, if I put two, whoops, if I put two threes here, I would pay three metal and then get two goods. So, if I can get matching ones, this is great. You know, just cost one metal and get two goods. Great value. So, I've built three buildings in my city here so far. Um, take the dice off. I do have one vitamin resource. I have three metal. These dice go away. Uh, now, I'm going to roll dice for the machine. And let's see what the machine does. Actually, this is the machines. Don't want to mix it up. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The machine. Check the green die to determine the um, marketplace action. Oh, did I do that last turn? Oh, I did. Okay. So the one. Uh, take the corresponding blueprint. So one, two, three, or four. So uh, number one, they're going to get Nexus. Did they build it right away? Yep, they do. Oh, that's purple. Okay, so that's the one. Uh, now, do they have a red building? No. Do they have a yellow building? No. They do have a blue, and they have a purple. So, again, we're looking at equal to or less than, so they're going to build a good here and a good here. Boo! Then we got three, folks. we got to ramp our actions, or ramp up our uh, city here. All right. So I'm going to do another turn, and then I'll, I'll just I'll stop here. just want to give you a demo of it. This is uh, Manufactions, the expansion to um, Fantastic Factories. Thank you for joining us. Uh, really appreciate it. And I'm going to go here. So on my turn, I've got the Think Tank in my hand. 
and then I can hire a specialist. Let's hire one of these here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to uh, hire the generalist. So I gain one metal, two energy. And I also gain a car. Oh, I gain one. Okay, this is cool. So I gain one metal, two energy, and one card. Um, so I'm going to gain. I'm trying to find one that has a. Here, I'll, I'll gain the vending machine. Trying to find something I can use uh, vitamins on, but they haven't popped up yet. Uh, so this is cool. So in the solo game, this doesn't affect the solo game, but in the multiplayer game, pick an opponent. They may gain one metal, two energy, or one card. So you get the best of the action, then they get like the weaker version of it. So that's cool. Okay. Oh, I was taking this. I was supposed to discard um, uh, the uh, matching symbol. So that's the, the symbol there. So I toss this in order to get that. Okay. Uh, now I roll my dice. And because of my human tech, I roll an additional die. Okay, so I have five, five, six, six, and a four. Okay. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Okay, let's match. Okay, no ones. Okay, I don't want to do that yet. So let's do two sixes. So two sixes gets me a good, another point, woohoo. Um, so machine's got three points. I've got two. Okay. I also get a vitamin, which is just the cube that I'm using to fill in. And I get to roll an extra die. Matching four, sweet. Ooh, you know what? Hmm. The fours don't go there. Um, what can I, okay. Tell you what, I'm going to go here. What the heck? Just since this last turn, um, for this quick demo of the game, I'm going to match four of those. So I have four metal. So ideally you want to have like a little low number here, right? Like a one or two. So I've spent four metal, but I do get two goods. Okay. So that's four points total. Um, I can only put a one in the bio lab and then I have the, headquarters here where I can put matching stuff to get... Oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. Um, I'm going to put a five and a half five. Oh, wait, was I... You know what? I was supposed to discard one of these dice. That's right. Okay. Uh, because of my power, I roll an additional die, and then I have to get rid of one. This one gave me an extra one, so that's why I have two. I'm going to throw away the five. I'll put the five here for a metal. And then I'm going to spend the metal to build my vending machine. So from now on, I gain a vitamin after building a card. Okay, so that's that. All right, so I've already got four of these here. Uh, there, there are also victory points that are, I believe these are the numbers here for victory points. Is that right? Yep, prestige value. So uh, in addition to goods, once you get hit 12 goods, that's going to trigger the end of the game. You get the number of goods plus your prestige points. So I've got one, two, three uh, here. So, so far I've got um, four, seven points. The machine has one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points, and they got one more turn. Okay. So, yeah, the machine is going to ramp up here real quick. And I this is actually the easy mode. I started with two cards. So, okay. Uh, that's the end of my turn. Um, do, 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 do. I don't have, yeah, I don't have any max stuff out. So, these go here. Let's do the machine's turn and finish up the game. Machine gets to roll one of each die. So, the green die determines what they do from the board here. They three more goes there. Oh, and see here's another thing I forgot to do. So they turn this over. This gets built immediately. And then discard all the contractors in the um marketplace here. And then we go refill this demolitionist. A mentor. Okay. So okay there's a mentor that, that has some vitamins on there so gain three vitamins and then pick an opponent to gain one vitamin okay all right so let's see there's no red buildings no yellow uh purple they have one so they're gonna get a point again it's equal to or less than they get the point uh here they've rolled a six they have two blues so that is more than that so they don't receive anything so the time of the game that we're gonna stop here um because it's getting a little late for me well not late but I need to 
need to get ready for the rest of my streaming day. Um, they have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points, and I have one, two, three, uh, five, six, seven points at the end here. And that's the first couple of turns of the solo game. Let me look at the buildings here. I want to see if there's any like things that we use for um, the vitamins. Okay, so the pharmacy, you spend four energy and make two vitamins. And let's check out the rules here. So adding cards. Okay, so vitamins are not produced in the headquarters, right? Uh, you can only produce them here. Okay, folks. Here's the cool thing about vitamins. For each vitamin that you have, you may discard one to increase or decrease the value of a, a die. Uh, you can't loop around six to one or one to six. And as long as you have enough vitamins, there's no limit to how many you can use within a round. Okay, see, I remember in the base game, there were certain cards that let you... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure there were certain cards that let you use uh, that you, you can um, mitigate the dice. But here you have the... You know, I want to play another turn now. So let's play another turn just to use it. Um, and vitamins do count towards your resource. I only have four right now, so we're good. Okay, yeah, we're, we're doing another turn, at least for me. Uh, we, we don't care about the machine. Um... <laughs> Let me, so let's see, mentor. I have three vitamins. Nope. Oh, I just gained three vitamins. Hey, I'm, do oh, but darn it. I don't have any cards in my hand. Boo earns. Okay. Um, gain three cards. See, I can't get any uh, contractors because I don't have uh, cards to discard for those. So, but I can get one of these for free. Uh, let's get the power plant. I remember that one. All right, so now the dice phase, I get an extra one because of my faction ability there. Okay, I've got a couple of doubles, six and six, and I have a four, five, and three. I am going to have to discard one of these. Uh, let's put the fettuccine factory, or no, the concrete plant, right? No, fettuccine factory. Here, here. Um, so I get a good, that's one point, and I get a vitamin. And then I get to roll an extra die. Okay, so I'm going to have to discard one die because of the faction ability. Oh, boy. Um, and here's where I can start doing the cool thing with... All right, here you go. And this is what I love about this game, folks. This For a light engine building game, there's a lot of ways to like combo and stuff. This is fun. So what I'm going to do is... I've got three vitamins to spend. This is what I like about the expansion. First time playing, obviously, but I, I like this already. I have the vitamins to spend. I've got a three. Oh, okay. Oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to pull this off? I really want to do this. If I... How would get me this? Oh, no, I don't have enough dice. I don't have enough dice to do this. Okay. What I want to do is try to get the concrete plant to be able to... I was going to do the um, metal and then exchange it here. But I can't do that. Okay. What I can do is... Um, ooh, that's another... Interesting. Another way to do stuff. Wow. Wow. I, I actually have a lot of more um, options than I thought because I have the power plant in my hand. I could match these two here and get three metal, and then I could build it. And then when I build that, because of my vending machine, I get an extra uh, a free vitamin, and I can use those vitamins and knock that one. Okay, we're, we're let's try this thing. Hopefully, it'll work. Power or I do, I do I don't think I have enough dice. I don't. Maybe I do. Let's try it. I've got the mine. So I've got two dice there. Um, I am going to get three metal because I got one, two, then a bonus for three. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend those three metal. No, I don't want to do that. I oh, Actually, yeah. I'll spend the three metal to build my power plant. Okay. The power plant, I can put any number here. And that gives me the equal number of uh, energy. So I can put a six there, get six energy. 
Uh, it's going to be off screen there a little bit. Um, so I've got two dice left. I'm going to have to discard one of these because of my um, faction ability. I get to roll a die and then discard one. So I can't do the concrete plant, but I'm going to use two vitamins. Okay, tell you what. I'm going to discard the four. I'm going to use two vitamins to knock this down to one. I will place the one on the bio lab. And then by placing the one on the bio lab and spending the energy, I get a good. And there it is. So I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the power plant is 10 so far. And I have one energy and one vitamin left. Cool, cool, cool. I love, okay, I'm, I'm loving this uh, vitamin thing. Uh, you cannot build vitamins or you cannot generate vitamins at your headquarters, but you can uh, do it uh, from cards and uh, either from buildings or contractors. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, that's it. So, manufactions, you will get, when you kickstart it, you get 27 vitamin tokens, five replacement player aid cards, which weren't in the prototype. Uh, you will also get a replacement solo game player card. So I wonder if there's anything additional in the solo game that I missed. Um, but then you also get a bunch of blueprint cards, and uh, it was on the Kickstarter page. Y'all y'all can see how many you get. But yeah, that is going to do it, folks. That has been Fantastic Factories Manufactions. Uh, we played through a few turns of the solo game. Um, I've got two, three, four, five, six. The machine's got four. So we'd be about halfway through um, the solo game at this point. And again, this, this plays much faster than it is. I'm, you know, sitting here babbling, but it's all good. It's fun. Um, give me just a second here. Okay. Coming up at one o'clock on, um, my Twitch channel and also BGG's, um, going to be hosting it is my interview with the board game bar barrage crew. Um, Mark and Neil are going to be joining me. We're going to talk about our top three values in board gaming. So please uh, come back and join us 1 p.m. Pacific. I want to thank everyone in chat for hanging out. I really appreciate your time. And it's always, I, I love these Fridays because they're, they're super like chill. And I did get to play a little bit uh, today, but normally, you know, I stream games on Twitch or um, Renegade with Renegade Game Studios or other companies. Um, so this is, I always look forward to Fridays because it's really chill. And it's like, you know, a lot of my friends are in chat. So thank you again for joining me. Um, also, Monday, Patrick will be live streaming uh, with Meredith. Um, I've got my fingers crossed for Clank, but he said that either Clank or Calico, they'll be uh, are in the lead. So go to Board Game Spotlight and vote for what game he's going to play. Uh, Chris, I want to thank you. I haven't been able to talk to you in a while, so uh, really, uh, really good to connect with you here, friend. And also, thanks, Melanie, for the comments. And anyone else that I miss, uh, my apologies. Again, I'm not the best at keeping track with comments on uh, the screen here, but I appreciate your time. So... Until next time, or until later this afternoon, come back, and uh, we'll see you then. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Enjoy Spiel, and have a, have a good one, folks. Take care. Stay safe. Bye now.